Hello and welcome uh, from the most easterly part um, in Australia, Byron Bay. My name is Martin Kratke and I'm very much looking forward to cover with you financial analysis of listed companies in Power BI. Initially, just a few words about myself. Um, I'm the co-founder of uh, two organizations, uh, Managility, a specialist provider for Power BI solutions and the Microsoft Analysis Platform, and Actaris, um, a company that specializes in add-on solutions for Power BI, particularly around data integration, automating uh, Power BI processes, and planning. Um, I've got 20 years of implementing analytics and planning uh, projects. I've uh, worked with Power BI from the start and I have at the moment um, nine Power BI showcases listed in the partner showcase if you're interested. Have a look. I'd love to connect with you. Uh, my details are here on LinkedIn or on Twitter uh, if you like. So our topic today is um, financial data analysis for listed companies and that involves a few different areas. Um, the first one is getting to the data. So how can you get the data to do the financial analysis? And I will cover a few options in particular, how you can get it from web sources. The second thing is typically the data that you get is not uh, in the best state to realize um, your analysis. So you need to get involved in modeling. So we cover that in a few um, details around um, dimensional modeling. Then we move on to financial metrics. So again, with the data, you want to refine it with adding financial metrics. In our case, we will focus on valuations, so the discounted cash flow method to allow you to value uh, a company. And then finally, how can you best uh, present the information and recover um, a few reporting considerations there. So our first topic is um, data sourcing and so there's now of course different options so we can use uh, public websites which I will cover in detail so organizations that publish financial information um, about listed companies. Uh, you can get it from internal sources so for example if you want to analyze um, or the financial analysis uh, with your own companies or subsidiaries. You can access your own data sources or you can use external data providers that specialize um, in this area. We won't cover the two other methods uh, that's typically very specific to the particular use case um, but look at the uh, web, scrape, web scraping. So with web scraping we will look at uh, what are the options and how can you do it. How can you accomplish multi-page loads? So, uh, what's a little bit different than to the normal things that you likely know already from Power BI, of course, uh, how you can use uh, web sources, uh, how you can use a table. But I want to show you a few more uh, advanced ways how you can um, implement the web scraping or using web tables for multiple companies. So very often uh, in financial analysis you want to cover multiple companies. So here we will cover how you can do uh, the web scraping or the web tables in Power BI for multiple organizations. Then we look at the optimal structure um, of um, how you should um, um, structure the data and this brings us to the modeling as well and then also the, the transformations. So um, before I go into these functions let's have a look at the model directly. This is probably more interesting and also in, uh, in the end where we want to get to. So uh, at the end of the session what um, I would like to cover or what I would like to enable you to is to have financial analysis similar to the one uh, I have in place here. I'm just doing the refresh um, of my tables. In this case, you can see here I have loaded data from three companies Microsoft, McAfee, and Adobe. And so the, the user can choose either the, the entire group of companies or a particular company. 
they can choose a particular time slicer, they can see the uh, report, I just saw uh, that the loading went through successful, so all my methods are working successful, so what I'm showing you is uh, actually really producing the results we want. So we have here the uh, financial report, um, you know, whatever uh, you select. So in this case here we're using the companies as um, in, in the columns. And then we have the current period of the data, percentage of revenue, the prior year, and then we're showing a, a variance here as well. Um, what you already see here is we're using proper financial formatting and subtotal calculations. And there's now a variety of ways to do this. I will cover a few, but we'll get to that when we do the reporting. So you can see here we've got the proper subtotal calculations. We've got the, the right formatting as well. And um, we, this goes down to the uh, net income. And then we have a variety of metrics um, like um, you know shareholdings and uh, EPS and a lot of other uh, metrics that you typically need for financial analysis. We are using things here like uh, custom tooltips. So if I move the mouse pointer to a particular point, I can see uh, the details behind this uh, particular measure. This works obviously on the grouping. So we have a grouping here of revenue, uh, cost of goods sold, and expense accounts. I can go to the detail. I can move the mouse pointer there and then see these details. So here we see a breakdown of that particular company uh, for a period and I can see the details here. This is really just a very simple one. Um, normally what potentially will help you here is to have charts as well in the tooltip but you know, it's just the principle that um, I would recommend to use you know custom tooltips here for the analysis. Um, what we then see here is a, an overview now to allow the user to immediately get a trend. So I have here the core um, financial statement components, revenue, uh, cost of goods sold, expenses, and uh, income, non-operating um, income and expenses. So at a glance, I can see here was the trend. So in this case here, we see Adobe is looking pretty good. So they're moving up revenue-wise. The expenses are going up um, a fair bit as well. Uh, cost of goods sold um, go up as well. Non operating costs are irrelevant here for, for um, this organization. So this data is now nice, but obviously it is also good if you can see what where is this coming from. So what we're doing here as well, we've implemented the link back to the data. So for example, if you look here at Adobe and I want to see now the details, I can just click here. And now I get the, uh, the source of my data here. And this is where we will get to um, in a few minutes. How can you load the data from here for all the relevant companies in one go into Power BI? So we see you know, the same metrics that you have here on the left side are here as well. We see we structure them a little bit better here. So we, we, we're adding the grouping as well. Um, so, we, so the matching column here for this one, we filtered this on 2020, is this one here. So we see the 1268 matches uh, the data here. So that's always a good thing that um, you see um, how that your data is that you have in Power BI is really correct. So um, these are the financials. But, you know, uh, for our, one of our topics, like the valuation of companies, uh, we will also need the cash flow statement, so that's another table here where we see now the cash components, which is the key metric for the free cash flow they will need for the valuation, for the company valuation, we can get that as well. So we will be, and again that comes back to how to handle multiple loads from uh, source web tables, uh, we will cover that uh, very soon when we look at how have we done all this. So this is just uh, uh, the initial overview of the financials and then the other one is the cash flow. Sorry, this is the this one. It's the cash flow here, so similar than what you've seen before. Um, so now a lot of cash flow metrics also scraped from the web. Multiple companies, you can group them to industries. And here we see now the valuations. So I see according to this, um, let's for example select a particular one. So we see, according to my model, 
or the discounted cash flow valuation, Adobe is worth $303 billion. We can see how close this is to the current uh, valuation. So, for example, if I start a, a new browser now, so to the, to the market cap, and that's always leading always the comparison. You want to see is the share market valuing the company the same way as uh, the financials uh, do. So if I look here now for Adobe market cap today, so I can see the market cap uh, based on the share price is 215 billion. So I can see here my model is a little bit more optimistic than the share market. And this obviously is never a, a exact science like any social science. Uh, there's a lot of ways to skin the cats, there's parameters involved here. And based on the changing of these parameters, you can really significantly influence outcomes. Um, but I think what we are doing here will give you a pretty good um, uh, overall outcome. But the, the factors that we're using here um, should be adjusted uh, to the particular requirement at hand. So this is not setting in concrete. But this is now where we want to get to the reports. The analysis features here, the link back to the data, and then the uh, valuations, valuation calculations um, for the value of a particular company. So, for example, if you check this now for Microsoft, let's see how that changes. That's pretty close. So, typically, you know, people say Microsoft is a two trillion company. That is the value that we have here. So that's pretty pretty close to the market values so or our calculation here brings us pretty close to the two trillion that uh, Microsoft is generally valued at. So this is the outcome, but how do we get to this? And um, to, to do these page loads, we're using initially a reference to the website. So you can see here the, um, the website that we've loaded is Reuters. So we have a URL here for Reuters companies and then uh, based on the particular company we have here what's commonly called the ticker symbol. So uh, this is how the organization is identified. Uh, let me make this a bit larger maybe. So that you see here the URL and that is a always a standardized thing. So it's always this initial part of the URL, adbe.org for that company and then the uh, financial income statement annual. So that would get us the financials that um, I've just shown you before. So this is um, what we want to get from the website. And a key thing here now is to use the right ways of how to get to it. And unfortunately, when you do this out of the box, um, in Power BI, it's not the right way. And why is this relevant, the right way? If you don't do this the right way, so using a relative pass option where you use a syntax like this, so we have the fixed part with the companies, and then we have the very variable part with the, what's called the ticker symbol, so the name of the company and then the rest of the path, then this means you don't have to use a, a gateway when you publish it to uh, the, the Power BI web. If you don't do this uh, that way, so if you do it like the out-of-the-box way, and let's, let's look at this quickly. So if I go here now to, so this is now the uh, my data sources in, in, in Power Query, so how I'm getting to this, but let's say we start this now from scratch. We want to have a new web source. We want to use a web data source. Now I'm putting in the uh, URL. So I say, okay, give me this particular financial statement. And then click on OK. So Microsoft uh, Power Query is going out to, the, to this uh, URL that I've provided. And it will list now the particular tables. So I can see I've got four tables now. From this alone, I wouldn't really see what it, if this is the relevant information. So here, but here we see table one looks good. So table one is the one that has the um, income statement metrics, and then it has a few columns here for the for the period. So we see this is this 
December 21, November 20, so this is always an annual result for one year. So that looks pretty good, let's get this. And now we get the data here. So that looks in general okay, and there's of course a lot of transformations missing, we see that the header is not coming okay, and so on. But uh, if you would publish that to, um, to the Power BI service with a variable, so let's say you're using here, because as we want to do this for multiple companies, we, have, we want to use a variable here, so this is not always ADBE or Q, so in this case Adobe, but we want to do this for multiple companies. As, as, as we discussed, this was one of the key things that we want to achieve. We want to run this for multiple companies at the same time. Of course, what you could do is you could do what I've just done and say, okay, I'm doing this for Adobe, I'm doing another one for Microsoft, I'm doing another one for uh, Oracle, but that's obviously not very effective. So I want to show you a way how you can do this uh, in one go um, for a lot of companies. So this is uh, already something that you have to keep in mind. So if I go now to the solution, to my solution, that, that works. Here also a big shout out to Imke, Imke Feldman, some of you might know it, so she's uh, one of the absolute uh, M gurus and she helped me a little bit with a few um, questions that I had, so thanks in case you watch this, Imke, thank you very much for helping us there. Also if anyone is interested, um, just go to her website, um, it's called uh, BI Content, uh, just as a, I, I will give you a few links in this session of people that I think uh, and you know very helpful resources and that's definitely you know a very good one. So Imke's website the BI content and she's the absolute master in uh, M um, and you know she helped a lot with this um, what, what I'm covering here. So that was Imke so back to our um, Power Query results. As you can see here, I'm immediately using the advanced editor because so what we are doing here requires, uh, unfortunately, editing. So uh, if you do it in the automated way, as I mentioned before, you wouldn't get the result that you want. So I have to do this here um, in the advanced editor. So we see here now, uh, this is one part of my, um, of my Power Query um, my Power Query query. I have one for the actual financials, so this returns the actual result. So you can see here, this is now properly formatted in the way I need it in my Power BI data set. So I have here all the metrics, I have the dates, I have the value, I have uh, the ticker, as we mentioned before, so that identifies the company, that's what you typically use to get the data from a URL. I have then um, groupings here so that we get the hierarchies in the financial statements that um, you saw before that I have a drill down from revenue to the revenue accounts, from expenses to the expense account, something I didn't have in the um, in this uh, web source. And then I have a few other things that we generally recommend for this kind of analysis. So we have an option um, of treating how to treat the sign. So you know if, when you add this up to groups. Is this added um, with a positive sign or a negative sign? This is relevant if you do calculations. So in this case, for the revenues, it's all positive. For costs, it's negative for the expenses. And then I have also groupings here. Um, so to achieve the sorting that you want. So for example, if I then have a, my financial statement, so let's look at this quickly. Ah, I can't go back now because I have the. Let me just close this. I'll open it again in a sec. So if we look at the reports, we have now this properly sorted. So revenue, expenses, non-operating, net income, and so on. And this is the way to achieve it, because probably I wouldn't, of course, know it. You know, if you do it alphabetically, that wouldn't help you. If you do it by value, in this case, it might even be okay. But that's unfortunately not. Um, uh, reliable. Um, so you have to uh, manage the sorting and that's what we're doing here um, in this in this column here with the sort order that is then applied um, with a column by sort order in Power BI. So I'm sorting the account groups by uh, that column. 
And then I have the resulting calculation. So here I'm just multiplying the value times the sign. So you can see you're getting, getting the revenue positive, whereas I'm getting the cost negative. So for my calculation, that is helpful if I, if I do it that way. And then finally, I'm also including the link here back to this particular web source that I'm, that I'm using here. So you saw when I clicked on this, I'm getting the respective report so that I can compare the information as well and see where it's really coming from. So to put this URL back in there helps me uh, to achieve this because then in the end it's a very simple thing in, in Power BI. You just point to this particular um, column. So you point to the report link, um, make this a URL, so just uh, make this a data category URL, and then this allows you to have the, the drill to the underlying uh, website. So a very simple way to do this, and this is just a normal table visual in Power BI. So for, to handle these groupings and the signs and so on, you have now different options. You can use Excel sheets. Um, what I've done here is I'm, I'm using a relational table where I'm handling all these things and the, the beauty here is I can edit this directly in Excel. So if I click here I could now for example change that I want to have a hierarchy here that's different to what I'm having here. I want to edit the sign or I want to uh, change the order and I can edit directly here. I'm not telling you how I'm doing this but if you look at our website um, you can see it. But you can do exactly the same thing if you have an Excel sheet where you just put in the copy the metrics that you have um, that are coming from the source system. So what I'm already doing here is I'm getting this table and then we just have a distinct um, filter. So I'm getting only the distinct um, metrics so for the uh, particular uh, you know, revenue, cost, expenses, cash flows and so on that I'm getting from the website. You can do the same thing in Excel. So you have here the, um, the metrics and then you just add in Excel you know whatever the other things are then you can edit it in Excel and just need to do the refresh that obviously um, has some limitations but you know it, it, it will work as well so this is how I have achieved this um, these calculations that I've just shown you before so I'm, I'm, I'm just merging the table where I'm editing the data so just the table that I'm editing is, is here and I can edit it in Power BI uh, and I'm just merging that with the um, what's coming from the uh, web URL. As you can see, that's coming from these columns here. The URL is just a very simple um, custom column in Power BI where I'm just saying, because as we discussed, the, the, um, the structure of the link is always the same. So I just concatenate the the static URL, writers.com companies, then add the variable, so whatever is the current ticker or company, I'm adding that into, so writers.com adbe.oq, and then I'm adding the financials at, at the end, and that gives me the, um, the link that I then can click. So this is, this is the core table, but if we look at this now, let me just make this a little bit bigger again. So where's my magnifier? It's been hiding out somewhere and I can't see it. Let me just open it again. So here's my magnifier. Let's make this a bit bigger. And have a look at what we're doing here. So the relevant one here is um, I'm, I'm having a table with the tickers that I want. So I mentioned before So, no. so um, I want to do this uh, scraping for multiple companies and what I'm doing here is I have another table where I list all the companies or ticker as they're called that I want to use. So I have for example the ADBE or Q that we just saw in there but also a lot of other ones and I can then also um, filter them by particular criteria. So I, um, here I'm saying selections. So I've marked a few as the ones that I want to use, and this is in the group selections. I'm, I'm selecting, give me all tickers in the selection group, 
and go through them uh, to retrieve the web data. So, and then what I'm doing is here, I'm getting now the, uh, the source table and I'm using this, I'm doing this using a function. So I'm saying now for each um, ticker, get the URL um, from with this function. Let's have a look at this function. So this function is called fload uh, URL. Looks like I have something open. I have to close this first. So this is now the fload URL function. So this function gets the gets the does the web uh, gets the the website. So here you see now what we had. What I think I've already shown this to you. So here we get now the. Just go a little bit to the left. Moving very much. So, so here you see now what I'm doing. So the web page contents, what I'm doing now is um, concatenating the path. So I'm, I'm saying here relative with this kind of syntax. Relative paths is companies and the ticker symbol name and then um, a part at the end financial. So this is the way this URL is constructed. So I have Reuters.com forward slash companies, forward slash whatever the ticker symbol is, and this is what I'm looping through. So for example, ADEO, BE, OQ, and then financials. So what this function is doing is for all tickers that are coming from the previous, um, that are called from the previous query, it gets the web page and um, brings back the result. And then the, what, I'm, what I'm doing here is then a few transformation steps. Um, so Maybe let's look at this from directly in Power Query. So maybe I'll make this a bit smaller. This is getting a little bit large. So, so this was my function. that expects two parameters. To be honest, I'm not using URL. Uh, so this is static because it's always going to write this. But again, if you want to, for example, access multiple providers, then you, this, you could use this URL. What we are calling, um, so you saw before, we're looping through all the tickers in a list. So I have a list of tickers, which is this table here, where I have um, the three companies that uh, I want to filter here. So I filtered this on selection. This was a, a criteria that I had um, in my table. So I have here a big ticker table that has 5,000 tickers, so 5,000 companies that are listed on the US Stock Exchange. But I'm only doing this for three. If you do this for 5,000, you will very likely fail. Because what I have to really also tell you is, as much as it's great that you can do this, technically retrieve multiple companies, Sooner or later, these source providers will uh, stop you because they have protection mechanisms in place when they believe somebody is taking their data and does this in an automated way, um, they will stop you. And I tried it already, so if you're going to more than 30 companies, the whole thing will fail because then you get a message, the extension was forcibly closed because the providers, in this case Reuters, will cut you down. So you, this, you have to view all this is a bit of a grain of salt. It depends on the data source. If you have sources that are non-commercial that don't have these kind of protections in them, then you will be fine. But obviously, these commercial data providers have no interest that you make it that it's easy for, that you download all their data. So in, in this case, all the finances of 5,000 companies um, in one go. So technically, uh, the approach that we're uh, showing you here works. Practically, it is unfortunately. Uh, not possible that you can download all their data in, in one go. So this is what we're doing. So we are calling the function to retrieve the web page, which is essentially the web page that you saw before. I think I'll put this back to, to uh, normal size, otherwise this gets a little bit tricky to navigate. So to get this data from this page, so from the three for the three companies, I'm looping through the three different companies: Microsoft, Adobe, and Mac McAfee. 
get this from uh, this page and then do my transformation steps and maybe let's just quickly go through them. So you see here the first one is uh, I'm getting the data so I'm getting the data so this, this was the initial one with the ticker so this is what I'm looping through this is the, the selection that uh, I had before in my ticker the three companies this obviously can be as long as you want or, or it can be as long as you want but the question is if, if it will execute but uh, you have the option to have it as long as you want and then we're doing something important so we are removing um, errors and again this is something um, that you potentially have to write yourself so to because particularly with these web sources if you get errors then a lot of the next steps will fail so it's important that you remove the errors as quickly as possible so for example if you start querying with a particular ticker from this link and the site doesn't um, can't return the financials for example then the whole thing will fail so it's good that you put in an error check here and say if this um, when I'm fetching these URLs if this resulted in an error then filter this out so I'm initially fetching with my uh, function so with the uh, URL load function so I'm fetching all the uh, for all the uh, tickers um, but then I'm filtering out what um, what has errors. Then what I'm doing is uh, I have to do uh, a few steps. So I have to add a column to identify what what company is it. So we can't see this here now, but uh, in the in the data, maybe if I cancel this quickly, we see the final result. I need to obviously identify my data is with what what company is it so you see here i'm getting this from the from the source url from the writers table but then i'm adding a column because i'm not getting this from the writers table because that is not part of the actual table so i have to add you know what is this company and i'm doing it uh, that way uh, with um, putting in the uh, the ticker there with uh, as a custom column and then I'm doing transformations so um, there's a few uh, rename steps then I'm merging it with my um, metadata table for the uh, to get the groupings and the signs and so on and then very important uh, is the unpivoting so I'm getting the data in the source like this with the dates uh, at the top but obviously as a proper uh, data model, I need the dates to be a column in my model. So I have to unpivot this and get the revenue, the date, and the, the value for that particular period. So that's what you saw as well here in the final result. So I'm getting now, as opposed to having the date across, I'm getting the date um, as a column. So this is probably one of the key steps here. That I have to do, and this brings us to the to the modeling. So, in general, it was nearly everything. I recommend when you do these kind of things, uh, use a star schema. Try to get to a star schema. So in our case, we have so sort of the typical case is you have a fact table that contains the actual records, and then you have the dimensions around it uh, that uh, give you more detail to these facts, and they are typically connected with keys. So I have then all the hierarchies in the dimension tables and the detailed information uh, and then the actual facts are here and that enables effective data modeling. You're likely already familiar with this but I just mentioned it briefly. So in our case the way this looks like is I have two fact tables, one for the financials, one for the cash flow. This could be also integrated in one but it's a little bit easier to understand and, and quicker to <laughs> create as well if it's in two. So I have one for the financials, one for the cash flow, and then I have the dimensions, which is the tickers, which is essentially all the company details. Then I have the metrics. So in this case, you have two. I have the metrics for the cash flow. I have the metrics for the um, for the financials. And then I have the integrated one. In my case, this is a little bit different because I wanted to make this editable. So I have all metrics here in the one table. And this is now really a separate write-back table where I can edit all these things. And so that's a, 
that's another dimension table. In, in essence, this is the same. So it has, from a core um, content, has the same uh, content. So that's the, the matrix. But here, I have these editable options. You know, the, the sign, uh, the grouping, um, and other things. So this is where you always want to get to. And this is what we are, are doing here as well. So those are the key things to keep in mind. I have a function here that uh, is called to retrieve the web content in the right format. So you really have to use this syntax here, relative path, um, then the variable, and then the concatenated other parts. Um, and then this is just the, the transformations here that we've already discussed. And uh, so then you get the, uh, the data here, and then you can add in the, in the main uh, query where you get all the data, you can then add all your other things on, like what we've discussed before, the groupings, the signs, and the, the link. And this is, this is really uh, all, all, all there is. So if you look then at the, um, at the report again, so if you go back, this is now what we can work with. So we have the, a nicely formatted table with, the, um, with all the data, and we can create our reports. And then the report is then very easy, and this is all thanks to a good star schema, where I just have the group, the metric, and the, the company, in this case, in the rows, that obviously can be as you need it. And then I have here, and this is quite important, two measures to allow you easy comparison. Obviously, this is something that you can do or not. I think it's helpful because this gives you a relative path, in this case, the relative prior previous year to your selected year. So I'm using here, use the applied sign, which is the key metric now. So the applied sign for all the measures. That's the current year and the prior year is just that current year with uh, year minus one. And again, if you have a right dimension table with the dates, calendar table, then here you get nicely the, the, the prior year dates and it's relative. So it's not like fixed in a particular column and then that also gives me the, the relative variances. Um, so what you can see here as well, I have subtotals here and this depends on how you do it. There's different ways to do this. I'm using here a visual that allows me to do this directly in the visual. So I can add, for example, a column for gross margin that calculates the revenue plastic uh, tax, plastic cost of goods sold, tax is actually wrong. It should be just the revenue and the cost of goods sold. And does it this way, so that's a very easy way to define calculation, but that depends on the visual. So in this case, this is one of our visuals, I won't tell you which one, if you're interested, you will find it on our website. You can do this, but there's also other visuals that allow you to do the same thing, so no, uh, no advertising here. Um, so I'm doing it that way. If you um, want to, there's another way as well to do this uh, as a subtotal calculation. So to get the subtotal uh, of um, gross profit, um, you can do it with a tax calculation. And what you have uh, here, and this is the way we recommend it, is that uh, you have a, a report structure table that has the structure that you want with the subtotal calculations and has particular flags. For example, this one here is calculated. So two is calculated, one is a grouping as is. Then the question if it has details, if there's a drill down. So if I want to show when I drill down, uh, in my report, if I see, for example, the in this case, the expenses and the expense accounts. And then what statement is it? Profit and loss and balance sheet. And so if you define it that way, you can use tax calculations that then calculate um, this structure. So it's either, it will either calculate the group, um, which is the running total. Sorry, the running total is actually the calculation. So that it, this would be a running the running total would be this plus this plus this and as I have the sign correct uh, I'm applying the sign here as well I'm getting the gross margin as revenue minus cost of goods sold or if I have the sign correctly already there then it's just revenue plus cost of goods sold so this will calculate this this subtotal and I will also need a running total calculation that does this we are lacking a little bit the time so I won't go into detail there how you uh, you know how this tax works, but it's not that complicated. So in, in my uh, slides you have it in there and you can see how this works. So this is if you can't set it in the visual, 
uh, you can do all these calculations directly uh, on the report as well. While we're here at the report, so uh, what I'm doing here is, and this is quite useful metrics for the financial analysis, I'm calculating the uh, prior years to get to the growth rates. So I'm, I'm, I'm having here the current year and then three years prior. So I'm looking at four years prior, which gives me growth rate, which is then also important and brings us to the last topic today, the discounted cash flow calculations, because that will help us to calculate the uh, future uh, cash flows and, and the growth rates. Uh, this is just a normal um, column visual um, where I'm using uh, the small multiples for eight groups to get this nice overview of how the key uh, groups have uh, performed. So, but now to the uh, last topic to the, uh, sorry, this is the wrong one. My camera is blocking exactly get to the right report page, so this is the wrong one again. So here's now the, uh, the cash flow one that brings us to the company valuation. So here you see now the valuation, you see I have three metrics here. The first one is the discounted cash flow valuation. Let's have a quick look how this is calculated. Let me just get back to the slide. So this is how you calculate or one way of calculating the value of a company um, and it's it's based on the cash that it produces there's obviously a, this is a science and that's a lot of uh, things to take into account here but I'll, I'll try to explain it as simple as possible so the cash that a organization produces on an annual basis and that gets discounted so you know uh, cash in a future period is less than worth the now so I have to discount it so it's one plus R and R is the discount rate. And again, it's a discount rate, it's another science. Typically, it's using a weighted average cost of capital, which is a mix of um, interest cost so, and uh, debt cost, asset and, and debt cost. Uh, but again, this is uh, a science and this would lead us a little bit too far. So this is this weighted average cost of capital. Essentially, is the, the discounting factor that also includes risks, typically for stock. Um, valuations. So you use this uh, this discount rate and calculate the cash flows for a specific period. So in my case, I'm using four, but it really depends. Normally, you know, everything after four years, that so much change can happen that it would be likely not that useful to do it uh, much longer. So I'm using four years of calculating um, cash inflows, and then you have a terminal value. And again, there's no variety of ways to do this. You can say, I'm assuming that these cash flows, these annual cash flows will continue in, in perpetuity, or you can assume uh, multiples. So for example, EBITDA multiples. So what was the earnings before interest that our organization uh, has produced? And you know, with similar companies, how much has the acquirer paid? So I don't know, Microsoft producing $1 billion EBIT, earnings before interest. Uh, taxes, depreciation, and um, amortization, and you multiply this with whatever much more the acquirer paid. So that those are the two options, and this is exactly what I'm doing also in the, in the calculation. So I'm taking first year cash flow, next year's cash flow, which is now I'm using here growth rate. So the gross over the prior um, three periods. The average, I'm, I'm multiplying this here, so to take into account that you know this company is growing, so I need to also apply growth factor with the cash flows, and then divide this with the discount rate. And I'm doing this for uh, four years. That's in the end, it's always the same calculation. It's just that the the, the discount rate changes, where I have the uh, you know the discount one plus the discount rate to the power two. So this would be uh, one plus discount rate to the power of two, to the power of three, to the power of four, it's just a DAX power VI function, and then the terminal value. And this is uh, exactly what I'm what I'm doing here. So I have here, and I look at the cash flow, I have here the 
first the cash flow calculation, which is just again, if, if you have a proper data model where the metrics is a dimension, and just saying, okay, give me the cash from operating activities, that's the one I want to use here. Again, there's a lot of different ways to do this. I'm doing it, I'm using just this one. You could add and subtract other components here again, but just to keep it simple, I've just left it on the cash from operating um, activities. So that gives me uh, that number, 6675, if I'm looking at the at Microsoft here. And then I'm calculating the, the discounted cash flow, discounted cash flows, I have to say. So if I look at this now, the same calculation that before, that you saw before is now here. And I'm also having the gross rate where I have, this helps me now to calculate the gross. I'm using, um, I'm calculating the, the prior year. So I'm current year, uh, last year, two years ago, three years ago. And then I'm just calculating the, the, the growth of this year. So this would be current year versus year before. This is a uh, uh, year before versus two years ago. And then what I'm just doing is I'm just calculating the average of these three growth rates and apply them to the cash flow calculation. And this is in the end it. So here, I'm, this gives me, gets me now to the 1.8 trillion for Microsoft, uh, the terminal value of 1.49 billion, trillion, sorry, and a cash flow in year four of 104 billion. So this is it from my end. I very much hope you have enjoyed this presentation, found it useful, and um, if you have any questions, uh, if you're interested in what we do, please check out our website at carries.com and agility.co. Connect with me on LinkedIn, follow us on Twitter, follow us on Facebook, um, on our LinkedIn page. And I'm now, of course, also available for a Q&A session. Thank you very much, everyone.